Hey guys, this is Dutch Bucket System number one. And for those of you who have been watching, you know that I've got two of these. I recently put in these transplants, and some of them aren't looking very happy. And it's just because of the heat. Um, the water temperature is the primary issue. It's not the ambient temperatures outside. They're, they can handle that if they're tomatoes. Um, but this water temperature is way too hot. I mean, it's I just tested it. It's like 40 C. So... What I'm going to do is pull these Dutch buckets inside and just hook them up to the aquaponics and run them off there. The water temperatures in there are much, much cooler, like 30 C. So I'm just not having that much luck with the hydroponic tomatoes because of the heat as the primary issue. The first set of plants that I ran, it was a cooler time of year. They did fine. But I'm, I'm not going to come out here and battle this water temperature every day trying to throw ice in it. I'm just not interested in doing that. And additionally, for me personally, I find the chemistry of the what's going on in the aquaponic water much more fascinating than um, the nutrient concept of, of adding to the hydroponics. Not to say I'm completely done with it. It's just more interesting for me and the aquaponics, that is. And additionally, I tested my nitrates in the aquaponic system, and they are off the charts, um, between 80 and 160 parts per million, which is extremely high. And so I can definitely handle some more plants. Now that being said, I'll take you over and show you the transplants in the aquaponic system, and I'm not experiencing any of this stuff. I mean, that's that's just heat, plain and simple. The plant just shit the bed. All right, these are cucumbers that I put in, and they're doing fine. And this is just, I'm not going to take you through and, sh through and show you everything, but this is how all my tomatoes look in the aquaponics. They're perfectly happy. I haven't suffered any casualties because of heat. So I'm going to tear down the Dutch buckets and I think we're going to put them back here because I can run them in one straight line and uh, I'll, you know, connect them all into the aquaponics and we'll run them that way. So you can see I've got all the stands and buckets moved. It took me about an hour, got a couple of scrapes and scratches, but the versatility of these things is just really, truly incredible. You just, it's everything is just plug and play. I literally connected the same two feed lines together to form one, connected both the initial drain tubes to make one drain line, and I just have to plumb it from here into the sump tank and uh, throw a pump on it, and we're good to go. All the water lines and everything are already in place. So I'll go ahead and get this stuff drilled so I can get the water back on these plants, and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, guys, so I just finished. Oh, dear God. I just finished plumbing everything. And what we're about to find out is whether or not this shit's going to work. Because I predict that this, the angle of this pipe, you can kind of see, might need to be shimmied up a little bit. The water that you see dripping is because I had a line <clears throat> that was hanging out of the bucket. So we've got water. Now we'll have to see the lowest point in our system. It, it might be okay. But for those of you who do this, you know it never works right the first time. But yeah, I just connected this HDPE. I just plugged in the pump. We've got water. So see if it starts leaking anywhere on the drain line is what I'm talking about. Yep, see, this is what I'm talking about right here. I'm gonna have to shimmy these up because it's getting some resistance and this is the lowest point of the drain because I didn't want to go too low on my sump because anytime you drill in the, in the side of your sump that becomes your new, your new lowest point and I at least want to keep enough water in the sump up to that that second steel bar there second from the bottom so uh, I'll have to shim this up a little bit and see if we can get this angle essentially to raise up and that'll help drain where it's supposed to so I'll do that now all right so I raised this by about one inch and that's all it took it's working fine now this is now the the uh, lowest point and then it goes down from there so that's working just fine so quick summary between the aquaponics and the hydroponics I, the Dutch bucket system hydroponic wise because I don't want to get you know a thousand liter reservoir to maintain my cooler water temperatures with the 
reservoirs that I was using that it's the 100 liter tank there it just gets too hot and the plants they're not they're not getting any reprieve from the weather at all because there's no cool water the water is hotter than the ambient temperatures outside and those coolers I was using is making everything like an oven so the heating effect was just multiplied but um yeah we'll see how this goes I'm just gonna run this pump 24 hours a day um, as bacteria begins to culminate in the media um, if I run the pumps intermittently then the bacteria suffer you know for hours in between watering periods like I was doing with the hydroponics so I'll just run them 24 hours a day and uh, now I've got 24 additional plants that I'm able to put into my aquaponics so that's it guys uh, thanks for watching Oh, one other thing that I wanted to mention was um, I suffered um, tomato, oh, what is it, spotted wilt virus. I had an issue with that in the Dutch bucket systems over there, and they were full of thrips. And I haven't had any issues in the, in the aquaponics with the thrips or the spotted wilt virus. I did lose two plants to bacterial wilt, and it's kind of a root a root issue where the plants just literally die in like a 12 hour period. They went from being perfectly healthy like this plant to wilted and very dead looking and the fruit had all softened and wrinkled up in literally 12 to 16 hours. It was just overnight they were gone. So I hope that doesn't become an issue but we'll see. Like I said I've lost two plants about three weeks apart in this grow bed. That's why the bigger tomatoes that you had seen in here are gone. The Brazilian brandy one, or the Brazilian beauties, um, even in the aquaponics, they finally split. I was having a huge issue. I thought it had something to do with the hydroponics. It's the variety. I will never grow them again. And um, nobody grows them anyways. I've, I've never, I can't find any information on them, just some seeds I got. So whatever, no big deal. Um, but even the stuff that they cross pollinated with cracks. Like this is a brandy one that um, I'm just going to pull them off here anyways. Uh, and that's what it looks like. These brandy wines, I haven't had any issue with cracking. So I guarantee you, by the shape, so I guarantee you this cross pollinated with one of those Brazilian beauties, and that's why this tomato is cracking, because I haven't had any other issues with brandy wines cracking. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll see how these turn out. I think they're going to work just fine. I can keep my water temperatures way down because, like I said, in this aquaponics, I'm running over 3,000 liters of water, and that's why it runs so much to keep it to keep it cool because it just gets unbearably hot. And once your water temperature starts coming up, trying to get it down is just as difficult as it is to heat it up. That's how water is. So you got to make it work for you. But yeah, 24 buckets should be pretty cool. We'll see how it goes. All right, that's it. Thanks.